Hey, 3D Basics class, it's week six. Welcome. Today, we're talking about UV editing and uh, what that even is uh, and uh, how it's useful to you. Uh, secondary topic is going to be rendering. We're going to talk about rendering a little bit more because I think um, I kind of I, we went over it a little bit quickly a couple weeks ago, and I want to revisit it. Spend a little bit more time talking about um, the render engines and the differences between them. Uh, and so um, the tertiary topic it, this week is actually going to be a separate recording, um, and it'll be optional because um, I think we'll we'll kind of fill an hour pretty easily here with this. Um, and uh, the, that topic is going to be particles. I originally did want to cover it this week, um, but it is sort of like bonus content, um, and it kind of relates. It could relate to your assignment three, your spooky tree, if you so wish. So look for a separate recording for that. It's optional. Um, so yeah. UV editing. Blender. All right. Uh, I'm going to start a new file here. So when we, you guys are making your desks, um, a lot of you guys found an image texture of wood and put it onto your uh, desk. So real quick, let me do that. Um, just a reminder on how you could do that. So I've got my default cube in here. I'm going to go to the material properties tab here, bottom right. Uh, on this default material, I'm going to change the base color from just a regular color by clicking this little yellow dot here. And I'm going to make this an image texture. And then over here in my material, and actually I'll, maybe I'll rename this here. I'll double click on that and I'll just call this wood. And I'll uh, open. And uh, I downloaded uh, an image texture here, wood. There it is, open image. And in order to see it here in the viewport, I actually need to change my uh, view from object mode to material preview or render. So I'm going to hit the Z key and go to material preview here like this. Okay. So now you can see my wood texture on here. So um, it just kind of slapped it on here without any other thought. So what if, so, okay, looking at what it's done. So you, we can see that um, the, the grain kind of uh, goes top to bottom here. You can see that it maybe even kind of continues around this corner. You can see this black line kind of wraps around the corner here. Uh, but then looking at this edge along the top here now, we can see that the grain is going two different ways. Um, and so like maybe it continues here, or maybe this is a continuation on this side. So um, how how would we how would you manipulate this? And that is, that is through UV editing. And now I acknowledge that um, this is not necessarily a prime example because you know if something if you had a box made out of wood, it wouldn't look like this anyway. But it, uh, I'll, I'll show you a more practical example here in a moment. So UV editing. So how an image texture gets placed onto a 3D object, a, f a flat image onto a 3D object, is Blender will unwrap the polygons of this like a, like a cardboard box. So if you're breaking down the latest um, shipment, you got uh, same day delivered from wherever um, to put it in the recycling. You know, you've got to take it apart and flatten it out. Or like imagine a cereal box. Like uh, if you open up a cereal box, you're able to lay it flat and there's kind of different parts of the box that kind of stick out and it folds back together. So you're unwrapping that cardboard box and uh, in 3D, uh, objects are unwrapped as well. And they call it UV unwrapping. And... Uh, and the, uh, I believe my understanding of um, why it's called UV is because it's using um, the letters at the end of the alphabet as like coordinates. So like you have Z, Y, X, W, V, U. So it's like UV is sort of like the X and Y of you know that dimension. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's that's my understanding of why it's UV because like UVW. X, Y, Z. Okay, anyway. So along the top here, uh, we've got uh, your layout workspace, modeling workspace. You've maybe experimented with sculpting we lo looked at last week. And now the next one here is UV editing. So let's look at that. Um, and on the default cube here, um, it actually has uh, 
the uh, the faces of this unwrapped already for us. So you can see here, we've got two views. Um, left view, this is like the UV workspace and the right view is just like our regular uh, viewport. So we've got um, the, the different faces of our cube laid out flat. So there are six sides to a cube and they're laid out flat here in kind of a T shape. Um, one thing I encourage you to do is, uh, there's this little button up here if you're following along. Very top left, there's these two arrows going in opposite directions. Uh, if you if you select that, uh, and actually if I hover over it, what does it say? UV sync selection. Whatever you select on the left, it's also gonna show you where it's selected on the right. So if I go th uh, three for face select, I can select this face here, and it's showing me that it's this face here on this side. Um, while I'm at it over here, I'm gonna go Z and do material preview so we can just kind of see the wood in both places. Okay. So, um, we can edit, um, so like I'm, I'm going to talk through this like kind of slowly cause, so that it makes sense. So this is um, the image texture, this wood thing here. I, I purposefully found a square one because square, uh, if, if you're looking for uh, image textures or you're creating image textures, it's always, always, always easier and simpler if it's square um, so that the proportions of things line up. So I found one that was perfectly square. So uh, how the, a 3D program handles it is it unwraps it, lays it flat, and then while it's flat, it puts the image texture on it and then wraps it back up. But how can we manipulate this? So it's, it's actually quite simple. So um, looking, clicking on the, the faces here, uh, or actually, and maybe I'll even do A for all, I could... Um, S, hit the S key and scale this down, scale down these shapes. So you can see that as I scale my UV, my unwrapped UVs, um, the material appears larger on the right hand side. So you can see that like now it's saying, okay, like this part of the image texture is gonna be mapped here and this one's gonna be here. And so now if I do S to scale this up, I'm making my UV my UV is larger, and it's making the image texture appear smaller. So if I go like this, if I go way up like this, now it's like the entire image texture appears on each side. I can also rotate this. So like if I'm if I want the grain to be going the other way, I can R rotate like this. You can see that now as I'm turning it, it's you know turning there as well. You can even do like individual pieces too. So like um, you can go one for vertex select and select this vertex here and G move it around. <laughs> you, you start to get in trouble a little bit though because you can see that it's it's got to split things into triangles so it's trying to kind of justify how this all works here. Two for edge select. Yeah, and it gets a little funky. And, and one thing to notice uh, if I go back to one for vertex select. Um, you can, if I select one vertex, there's a couple places where it's, or especially on the edges, that it, it also selects um, a, another vertex, and that's because those are actually connected once it wraps it back together. So like, if I grab this one here, um, you can see that it also turned this one orange here. That's because when, when you wrap those faces together, though, that's the same point. So if I G move this around here, you can see that now it's, uh, moving the image texture around on that, on those three sides there. Because it's actually three of these faces that are being moved when I do that. Okay, okay. So hopefully, yeah, the, the goal of me showing this to you now is just to like understand the process, how this happens. Um, okay, so but before, we, before we go further, um, I actually want to, I want to make a new um, image texture and and in blender you can you can create image textures there's there's actually the, the very next um, workspace up here is texture paint so you can actually just like paint um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete uh, I'm gonna delete the wood material from here oh, okay well I think I have to when you're editing it you're not you can't do it okay deleting the wood texture I'm gonna do a new one and I'm gonna call this uh, polka dots polka dots and I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna change the base color to an image texture like this. 
But rather than opening one or uh, loading one that already exists, I'm going to hit new, create new. And uh, let's look at this. Um, so I'm, I'm going to call this like polka dots um, image. <laughs> Note the, the width and height here. It's 1024 by 1024, which is a square, and that is uh, appropriate. Um, doesn't really matter what the color. Actually, maybe I'll make it white to start. OK. OK. So uh, polka dots image. OK, uh, but how do I actually like edit this? So now let me go over to, to texture paint like this. And, uh, and I can actually like draw right on here. So I think I need to, I need to select a different color. Let's do. Kind of a teal color, great. And uh, so now you can you can draw on here like this. And now you can see that by drawing on it, it uh, you know put it on here. So uh, actually, let me undo that. And let me actually make polka dots. So let me just go like polka dot, polka dot. No, and I want. Uh, can I have a harder radius? No, hold on. Uh, okay, so to to change your brush settings, um, if your if your uh, if your mouse is over here in the the painting window, hit the N key, right? N, yeah, N uh, will allow you to. Uh, actually, will it? I want to. I don't want mix. Maybe I do want mix. I want I want a sharper edge. I don't. <laughs> can you tell I don't actually do this that often? Uh, radius, uh, whatever. Sorry, I'm experimenting. Uh, it's down here. Um, f I think it's fall off. Uh, can we do like this? Aha, okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, make my radius smaller. And now I'm going to add some polka dots. Okay. Polka dots, polka dots, polka dots, polka dots, polka dots. Great. Just trying not to intersect and have a bunch around like this. And, you know, maybe you do this in Photoshop or maybe you're talented in another sort of design program. But I'm not. Okay. Maybe we'll make it a little smaller. F, F key makes it smaller. It's kind of hard to see the white on white. Okay. So we have this image texture. Great. Uh, we can go back to UV editing, really, now that we have that lined up. Okay, so now um, let's say, for example, I want a polka dot to kind of cover this corner. So you can see that, like, from this face to this face, it lines up. But here, it's like, I want that to be there. So what do we do? So um, there are... You can... Uh, help Blender unwrap your object in a way that you want. That's helpful. So um, real quick, uh, if I do um, A to select all, so and my mouse is over here in the viewport on the right side. I hit A to select all. Um, the sh keyboard shortcut to unwrap, unwrap is you. Oops, did I move my mouse? So unwrap. So if, if I just do regular unwrap like this, if you just click unwrap, um, yeah, uh, you get an error, something Python, I don't know. But uh, that all that does is it just sort of like takes what's there and kind of just slops it onto the other side. So um, there's there's a more kind of efficient way to do it, and that's um, by doing Smart UV Project. So if you hit the U key, Smart UV Project, and there's um, there's a couple of ways to, or not a couple of ways, but like a couple of settings to fiddle with if you wish. Uh, but you can probably just leave it all there and hit OK. Okay, so what it did is it just, it took, if I go three for face select, um, it just took them all and made them all like kind of independent sides, which, you know, I guess we can work with, but um, there's a better way. So what we can do is we can mark or we can signal, identify which edges we want to be the seams of our UV unwrapping. So like, think, think back to your cereal box, like there's one part, there's one corner of the cereal box where it's a seam, where it's not just the cardboard folded over, it's where the cardboard meets the cardboard, and it's been wrapped around. So let's do that, so let's think about it. So if, uh, actually, and I should, I should actually 
think about where my camera is. Okay, so let's let's talk about this because our, our camera is looking at the cube like this. We want this um, this area here to have a polka dot that goes over it, which means we don't want seams here on this edge, on this edge, or on this edge. So what we can do is um, if this is the front, we got to go around to the back side, and we you can select edges in edit mode here and do two. And we can right click and say mark seam. And what it does is it turns it red, it turns an edge red like this. So what we can do is, um, and this, again, this is, there's no, well, I, maybe there are right and wrong ways to do this, but there's there are many, many ways to do this. Um, and it's, it's sort of like uh, you figure out what works for you. And so the general rule is put seams where you're not gonna see them. So for example, if our camera is right here and we're looking at the cube in this direction, the seams can pretty much be anything on the backside. So like we can do like this and this and this and this and this can be a seam. So we can right click mark seam on all these and then they all have this red edge on them. So if I go Z, you can probably see it better or if I do solid like this, so that's red. So that means like these two are going to be like a chunk and maybe we even like seam the, the very bottom too. We can say this and this, right click, mark seam. So we'll, we'll have three chunks. We'll have this, this one on the bottom, we'll have these two on the back, and then we'll have these three that are facing the camera all kind of glued together. And so then what we can do is we can unwrap again. So just hit, uh, do it. Actually, do I need to hit A? Can I just do U and do smart UV project? Let's try it. Yeah, it didn't do anything. So you do have to select all of the all the um, faces. So you can go A and to select all. And, and make sure your mouse is on the right side here. If your mouse is on the left, it's it uh, it's not going to do it. U, Smart UV Project. Leave everything as it is. Oh, interesting. Uh, let's see what this did. So if I go, oh, uh, oops. Z Material Preview. Hmm, okay. Interesting, it's not doing what I <laughs> expected, pause. Okay, so I, I actually, I had it backwards. <laughs> I, I, I said, um, oops, I'm gonna get my mouse back here, A. So Smart UV Project is the like quick way to do it. Unwrap is the like f official way to do it. So if you've marked seams like this, you should, you should do U and select Unwrap because it's just, it's gonna do it exactly how you told it to. Smart UV Project attempts to like kind of do it fancy if you don't want to mark seams, uh, but unwrap is going to unwrap it exactly how you told it to. So now if I, since I've marked these seams, I'm going to hit unwrap. Aha, okay, and here we go. So look at the result. So we can see now that we have uh, these, this corner is kind of all covered the way we want it to, and uh, we've got these, these two other bits on the back that don't matter as much. And so um, to select, so um, each individual piece on a UV map is called an island. Um, so we've got three islands here. So we've got this, this island, oops, three for face select, this island here, this island here with these three, and these two here as an island. So um, if you're, when you're in, when you're UV editing, if you put your mouse over an island, L is the keyboard shortcut to select that island, that whole island, L. I guess, how do you deselect? Shift L. Shift L. That's a long way for your finger. I guess if you've got a shift key on the other side of your keyboard. <laughs> okay, so um, if I if I hover over this island here, L, I can S scale this. Oh, no, it is dragging the whole thing down. Interesting. If I grab these three, G. Oh, okay. Ooh, it's having uh, an interesting effect that I was not uh, anticipating. Okay, hold on. Oh. I, I know exactly what it is. Um, for some reason, I have proportional editing turned on. There we go. Okay, now if I do L. Hold on. Okay, undo, 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 undo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> proportional editing is off. If I do L like this, I can S scale. Here we go. L. You can move those together. But anyway, okay. So, um... I can select this island and I can G move this around. So n notice, here we go, here we go. So this this is the trick. 
This is part of the art of it. Um, if you're wanting seams to be connected, for example, three squares like this, where their edges are connected, you're, it's, it, things are going to be stretched a little bit. So that's part of the art is like, how do you get the material you want there and not have too much crazy stretching? The general idea is you want um, the, the sizes of your polygons to be about the same relative size in your UV map. So, for example, like if I have these two are were really small like this, and this island was really big, um, you would notice a difference. That's like okay, it looks the polka dots are really big here, but they're really small here. So the goal is to try to keep things of a similar size. Okay. So this is this is step one of this is part one of understanding UV UV unwrapping. So marking seams where they can't be seen, and positioning things uh, moving around the faces to get them lined up as you want. So um, I downloaded a, kind of a cool example. Let me go go to my downloads here. Uh, Let's open this up. Okay, so this is this is a um, a free asset that I downloaded from Polyhaven. Um, it's called um, like wooden ship or something. <laughs> ship. Uh, okay, and so um, and actually, let me change to GPU so it goes a little faster. Okay, um, and also it didn't have a light, so let me bring in a light here. Let me bring in a sunlight. Uh, I don't think I really actually talked about um, sunlights. But uh, sunlight is is an infinite light that uh, it doesn't ex really matter where it is because it'll always have the same strength. It just matters the direction, and it has um, sharp shadows like like our true sunlight. Okay, so check this out. Uh, here is and actually what I what I really want you to look at is the back. So let me actually kind of angle it this way so you can see the back of the ship. Okay. So um, looking at the details on the back of this old old wooden ship. Um, uh, that looks pretty good. I think this is a cool model. Um, uh, looking at the this back chunk, the aft of it, um, you 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 maybe expect that um, there is uh, there's like a a lot of like little details in the in the model, and it's like oh, every little bit here was sculpted or whatever. Like they put the letters in here and they, as text, and they extruded and whatever. Uh, but if we if I go to my uh, UV editing thing here, let's look at this. Uh, you may be surprised to see that um, all of these things, like including the letters, are just part of an image texture. But they've mapped it out like uh, appropriately so that each bit you know appears on the right thing. So actually, if if I even just open this file up, let me go downloads. Oops, that's not the right one. That's a different wood texture. Sorry, hold on. Texture is it's this uh, diff. So this is the image texture here. Um, they, you know, designed all of these little pieces, all of the little details, and like including the letters here, and then they unwrapped the, the mesh of the back of the ship and just like laid out like, okay, this thing is gonna be right over the letters here. So that part of the image texture appears on it. And so this, this is how video games do it. Um, and, and especially if you think like old school video games, like games from the 90s and stuff like that, where it, they had like repeating textures, like, um, like Doom, or those like those first kind of shooters, you'd you'd see like patterns on the walls like over and over and over, and that's because they had really limited um, space and memory to load all of these different assets. So they kind of they would mix and match different pieces and cram them all onto one image texture like this, um, and they'd take different pieces of it. So image textures are a great way to add detail without adding like um, 
like actual polygons to your mesh to your model and so like this is this is where it it, uh, it comes in handy to have some skills some artistic skills like this and I do not have skills like this but maybe you have you have an artist friend who likes to make who would be interested in helping you make some game assets or something like that um, so okay sorry going back going back to the to the blender file here so like looking at the back of this ship it's not terribly complicated um, like you know there's a few parts that have a, a little bit more detail like these little kind of uh, flashy bits on the back here but like the place where the the name goes is just like a, a solid chunk like it's just this one here and it's actually kind of a crazy end gone <laughs> um, but they made it work so if I go Z material preview like this I may take a second because it's loading. Uh oh, now Blender's crashing. Okay, no, we made it. Actually, maybe maybe I should even do a render preview. It's gonna take even longer. Here we go. So like, I could take this this bit three for face select, uh, and I gotta turn on sync selection here. I could take this one and I could you know G move it around, and you can see that the the words move you know on the right as I move this around. So this. You know, the the unwrapping of this was done very carefully and very intentionally. And you can see all of the seams that they put in here are these, like, uh, kind of teal lines. So this that's, like, the, the power of it a little bit. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's work through kind of another smaller example. Uh, so let me close this. Don't save. And let's go file new here, general. I don't want to save... That cube. Okay, um, let's put a Suzanne in here. So Shift A, Mesh, Monkey. Great. Okay. Let's go to the UV editing right here. And actually, okay. So, whoops. Let me change my camera view. So before I go, so let me just, let me start over. Shift A, Add a Mesh, Add a Monkey. When your Add menu pops up for many of these primitives. There's this uh, checkbox that says generate UVs. So many of these primitives have a default UV map. So for a cube, it's like that T shape. Um, for a monkey, it's this shape here. So you can see, um, if I turn on sync selection, we've got eyes. Eyes are each an island. And the ears are each an island. And then the rest is an island here like this. So again, um, this is handy because it's already been done for us, but if you make a new image texture, um, you know, we could call this one monkey face. Okay. Uh, and then we could go over to texture paint like this and actually we would have to select monkey face like this. But then you can, you can color well, I suppose, do I need to, do I need, yeah, I need to assign the, the material on here. I go to image texture and select monkey face. There we go. Um, so you could have white eyes like this. Just color white eyes here. There's one white one. There's another white one. Oops, I got a little bit of the ear there. And then we could change our color to blue. He's got blue ears. Like this. And, uh, you know, uh, an orange face, and I could go F to make my mouse a lot bigger and then just save myself some time. Okay, so that's, you know, that's a thing you could do. You could also do, so this this would be called, like, Painted Monkey. And don't forget, here's, here's your reminder on, like, having multiple image textures. Uh, so, like, if I go back to Modeling View like this, or Modeling Workspace, maybe I do a Material Preview like that. Go down to my materials tab. I could add another material on here, and maybe this is uh, new, and I call this one wood. And do I still have a wood loaded in here? I don't. So I could change this base color to an image texture, and open, and find my you know my wood thing here, and open an image like that. Select the ears. Three. And actually, you know, you know what you maybe could do is you could go to UV editing like this, select the ears like this, L, L, 
And go to your material preview and assign. So actually, I should make sure we're in material preview like this. And don't forget, if you have multiple materials on the same object, you can just, whichever faces you have selected, you can assign that material to those faces. So now, Mikey's got wooden ears. And then you can you know, still use the same UV map to, to work with that. So just switch this to wood like this, and then you can, G, kind of you can move the ears around, or S, scale these down, R, rotate if you want to change the direction of the grain on the ears. So there's there's a lot to do, and it's 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 not that it's not super glamorous. This is maybe one of the least fun things, <laughs> in my opinion, that you have to do as a 3D creator. Um, but it's imperative if you're wanting if you're using image textures to get it to to be the way you want it to. Okay, one final example, and then and then I want to spend some time talking about rendering. Um, back like this okay so let me uh, let's go file new and I'll pause while I set up this next thing here don't see okay so I made this thing I, I took a cube and I extruded it a bunch of times and I made some weird weird faces with it and uh, and I also put a subdivision service modifier on it and a shade smooth so Let's say you wanted to put a image texture on something kind of rounded like this, something smooth. And this is where you really, um, it really can be tricky. And there's, there's something that uh, UV editors do sometimes. So because this, you know, was not a default shape, we, we actually do need to unwrap this. So if I go U and unwrap, hmm, that's, that isn't quite what I wanted. What if we do U Smart UV Project? What does this do? Here we go. Okay, so if I did if I did U Smart UV Project, it kind of just laid it all out like this. And again, so the, it's it's individual pieces, but it's not necessarily what we're looking for. So um, one thing that that uh, creators do, and what do they, what would you call them? Materialists do is, uh, is they put um, kind of a, like a reference texture Im image texture on it. So let's do, let's create a new one here in UV editing. And let's call this like a uh, uh, checker. And rather than generated type, uh, select UV grid. And that color is fine. And then hit okay. So uh, what it's created is sort of like a little reference um, that, that we can put on here. So uh, over here, I'm going to go on my material, choose the base color, image texture, and select um, behind my head the checker. And then go Z, material preview. Okay. So this, this is a good way to work with a UV image uh, or work with uh, a UV map with it before you load an, uh, an image in here. So, like I said, the goal is to have all of these be square and about the same size. So you can see, like, here. Uh, getting a little stretchy, and we can see that there's a seam here, how it's unwrapped it by default. So there's places where it works, and there's places where it's not working. Um, so if I... I should probably, like... First, determine kind of where your camera is going to be, like this. Just control Alt Zero. Uh, let me go to my camera settings and zoom out a little bit. Focal length. There we go. Twenty-six millimeters. Okay. So if my camera is going to be here, we got to decide uh, where we want to put some seams. And uh, and attempt to get our UV map uh, a little bit more normal. A little bit more uniform. So along the back side is is where we can do it. So I'm going to go tab for edit mode, and pretty much anything on the bottom on the back here. So I'm going to go two for edge select, and I'm going to just um, select a bunch of these on the back here. And we've got this one here. These maybe even included this one here. Maybe go up the back like this. So it's like it's good to have several seams. Um, right click mark seam 
uh, just to give your just to give yourself um, plenty of options. Whoops, I'm like it's. Can I talk and do this at the same time? Probably not. Um, the more seams you make, the the more uh, the more likely you're going to have uh, usable pe islands on your u when it's unwrapped. So let me just go like this. Um, I probably don't want to do that one here. So maybe I'll just and and it's also good to like complete islands. So like this one here, maybe I'll just like add this face. That's kind of hard to see. Z wireframe. There we go. And I'll right click mark a seam here so that this is one whole island here. When I'm I've lost my orientation a little bit. There we go. So maybe along the back, I was maybe trying to avoid doing this one here. I got to see what my uh, what I'm seeing in my camera view here. So maybe all along this back side, I'll do another one. So I'll do go like, whoops, like this one here, this, 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 this. Whoops, not that one. Be careful when you're in wireframe mode. It's like that could be a seam there. Right click. Mark seam, not mark sharp, mark seam. And then maybe like this backside here. Here, 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 here. Right click, mark seam. And I don't know. Maybe that's fine. Maybe I'll, and actually, maybe I should have. Maybe this one here. I'm going to right click, clear seam, and just have it continue around the bottom. Just so there's like a, f a couple fewer shapes. Okay, right click. Mark C. Okay, so I've got like a few different islands kind of carved out of here. We'll see if this makes it a little bit easier. I'm a little nervous actually about this on the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually going to add one more on the underside of this part on the top. And mark a seam there as well. So we've got one island kind of underneath there like that. Okay, should we see? Should we see what this does? So I'm gonna go Z material preview like this, and then I'm gonna go U. Whoops, no, I need to go tab for edit mode. A for all, U for unwrap. Okay, oof. Uh, arguably worse. Hmm. So you can see like up here on the top. So let me go A again. It's it's also maybe a little bit tricky to see, but I have a couple. Yeah. Like this one here is like gigantic. Where's that one over here? Oh yeah, so it's it's like this teeny tiny spot right here is this one. <laughs> so uh, back to the drawing board. Not necessarily back to the drawing board, but let's let's try something different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go three, or sorry, two for edge select, and I'm gonna add a couple more seams up top like this. Add a seam here and one here, and I'm going to right click, mark seam. Let's just see what this does. So I'm going to go A for all, U for unwrap. Let's try that again. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. Um, I'm not noticing any seams here now in this view, which is good. Uh, maybe, maybe right here. So what, what you might end up doing is maybe you add a loop cut. So maybe you go control R, loop cut here like this, just straight down this top section. So actually, don't do that. So if I if I control R, add a loop cut here like this, it'll give me a seam right in the middle on the bottom underneath. So let me, let me clear this seam. So I'm gonna do edge select here. I'm gonna select these ones. I'm gonna clear that seam and just make it this one hidden on the bottom like that. Right click, mark seam. Let's try that again. A, U, unwrap. Okay, it's looking a little better. So this is, this is the process. So like just trying to find a place to add seams so that your material is a little bit nicer. And the other thing you can do, now that I think about it, is if I, if I go A and I want this one here, Where's this one on this side? 
so maybe you end up just like S scaling this down. Or if I do A. So maybe you grab this island here, L. Ah, but see, so yeah, maybe you need, <laughs> again, this shape that I've made is an abomination. And I, I maybe should have made something a little bit simpler. <laughs> to, to attempt to wrap a image texture around something such as this is, is a tall order. So uh, maybe a bad example, but hopefully you're understanding the process of doing this. Okay. So then all you'd need to do is, is just switch this out for wood or whatever it is. So right now it's checker. All, all I need to do is, oh, well, now I, need, now I don't have it. Open. Downloads. Wood. Open. There you go. Now it's wood. Uh, so that's that's UV unwrapping. I I understand that it maybe is a little bit overwhelming, but just be aware that this is here, and that if you're having trouble with image textures, you may need to adjust this a little bit. Um, you may never need to worry about this ever again in your 3D careers. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't say that. It'll come up. And, and the worst thing that happens is you just clear your seams, start over, try again, and it's no big deal. It's, it's non-destructive for sure. Okay, rendering. Let's talk about rendering, rendering, rendering. Blender, don't save. Okay. So rendering starts with the camera. Um, and... Uh, we, and I realized we didn't even talk about camera, the camera properties at all um, when I talked about rendering before, but select your camera in just with your new default scene here and object data properties has a little icon of a camera here. So, uh, and actually uh, hit this button here or zero on your number pad to kind of go into your camera view. Two types of cameras, a perspective camera, or actually, um, I guess three. Perspective camera, an orthographic camera, means without perspective, and then a panoramic, which is essentially the same thing. <laughs> anyway, um, focal length, 50 millimeters. So if you know anything about real cameras, um, this they, 3D cameras function just like real cameras. So the longer your focal length, the more zoomed in you are. So, you know, like uh, a 210 lens is like one of those really long lens that you see like photographers at sporting events have. Or like a 16 is like a fisheye lens like this, a 14. Um, so that's first camera property to be aware of. Depth of field. Uh, and, and actually, clip start, clip end. If you ever find that um, something is uh, like disappearing, it's probably because it's more than 100 meters away. Um, so like I, I noticed on a couple of assignments that some of you were, were modeling things really big. Um, and then it's like, well, like now I can't see it. Like it's gone. That's because you probably made it gigantic and it's like more than 100 meters away from your camera. Um, so just like keep keep the scale in mind. Uh, delete that. Okay. Anyway, uh, depth of field. Sorry, clicking on my camera again. Depth of field. So d depth of field is actually something that um, you can turn on and off in Blender. If you're going for a photorealistic render, you should definitely be trying to use depth of field. Um, and it basically, depth of field means uh, or is just how much of your scene is in focus. So if I uh, want to get a, a dramatic render of Suzanne here, I'm kind of I want to look kind of straight at her like this, um, and maybe I'll change my focal length like this. Actually, maybe I'll maybe I'll kind of go up a little bit like this. Okay, and then <laughs> and then I, and then I'll put another. Uh, I'm laughing. It's not that funny. G shift Z. I'm going to put another monkey kind of like behind her like this. And like just peeking over her shoulder. Okay. 
And then if, if I wanted to do depth of field, uh, you can focus on object. And so you can say like, yep, hit the eyedropper. I want you to focus on Suzanne. And then uh, how you determine the depth of field is with the aperture. So this, again, is just like a real camera. So the f-stop is uh, the measurement of how much your, your aperture opens. So a lower f-stop means a larger opening, which would let more light into your camera, which means a shallower depth of field, which means less will be in focus. The amount that is, focus, is in focus is a very shallow amount. The larger the f-stop, the, the larger, sorry, the larger the number of the f-stop, the smaller the opening of the camera or the aperture, aperture, the larger the depth of field. So um, I've said I want, so uh, this is, so the front is going to be Suzanne and this is going to be creep in the background here. Creep. So uh, selecting my camera, the f-stop is at 2.8. So if I start turning down, oh no, I think I need a render preview here like this, sorry. Sorry, 2.8 was what it was at, Six, seven, eight. And I need, I need, a, I need my light source to be a little bit more in front of Suzanne there, okay. So, select my camera, object data properties, f-stop is 2.8. So you can see that creep is a little bit blurry because only Suzanne is, is in focus. So if I if you increase the f-stop, creep becomes more in focus. So if you can go all the way up to f2060, 20, 2060, 20, um, creep is all the way in focus. But if I crank, start to turn this down, four, three, two, oh, and you can see like at the really low depth f-stop, um, things get really blurry. Um, now I can I can hit this I can change my focus object here I can I drop creep in the background and now creep is in focus. The other cool thing you can do is uh, uh, you can have um, you can add something into your scene called a uh, empty. So we've done meshes and curves and whatever, but empties are um, just kind of handy little things that don't render, but they they can you can kind of attach stuff to. So like. What you can, I can rename this, em so empty, actually, I, I should explain that a little bit more clearly. All of these things, plane axes, arrows, single arrow, circle, cube, sphere, cone, image. All of these empties kind of have this shape in your viewport, but they they don't render. They're just sort of like to look at. So if I do plane axes like this, you can move it around, but if I, if I render, it's not going to be there. But what you can do is I could, you can rename this uh, focus control. And this can be the thing that the camera is always focused on. So rather than focus on object creep, I can say focus on object, and I can hit this little eyedropper and click on focus control. And now, and it goes zero to do. Now the the focus control is the thing that the camera is is putting in focus. So so you can move this around. So if I go G Y, I can move the sort of maybe I can move this G Y. I can move this like right at Suzanne's eyes, or I can move it to her ears, or I can move it all the way back to creep back there. So that's that's just kind of, that's kind of a cool thing to do with um, the depth of field. So that's on a camera focus object. So you can, you can see that there's like a little bit of animation potential here as well. So it's like looking here, well, dramatic look in the background. Okay. Um, The next thing I want to talk about before we actually talk about the render engines is, is lighting. I think um, lighting is, is very subjective, um, but I encourage you to try to have three lights in your scenes, at least three. Shift D. And like, even if they're just point lights, that's fine. Shift D. Um, but like, try to, try to like experiment with the lighting. Try to have some interesting lighting, some dramatic lighting. So like even just add like a little bit of colored light just adds a little bit more excitement to your scene. And so um, you can have lights as part of your scene. Like if uh, many of you on your desk assignment, you had a lamp on your desk, that can be great. But I also encourage you to have just like some, some ambient lighting um, from 
the I don't know, whatever, whatever it could be. Um, related to lighting, so you may be, you may have noticed that everything is gray. <laughs> the world is gray, um, and that the grayness of the world actually casts gray light onto your scene. Um, so one thing you can change is uh, the world properties here. You, we haven't looked at this one yet, the little red planet Earth. And the background color is actually set to gray, and it's casting this gray light. So you can set this to black, and now it's, uh, it's actually removing any light at all that's being cast onto your scene. Um, so I encourage you to... To look at that as well. In a later lecture, we're going to talk about using um, environment textures and using HDRIs. Um, oh, but I, I just I have to show you one real quick. Um, can I do this easily without comp confusing everyone? Environment texture. Uh, is there one built in? Oh, sky. Do this one. Sky texture. So, so rather than color. Click on this and do um, sky texture. And you can change, okay. And uh, and you can change the type of sky. Let's see, uh, there's like different types of skies if you go through these. Ah, yeah, yeah, but play with this if you want. There's, there's kind of, there's some cool, there's some cool things that you can do. Sun disk, sky size, sun elevation. Anyway, yes, yeah, so you could do like kind of a dusk, a dusk situation here. Anyway, 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 I'm get, I'm getting off topic. So to go to go back to that, you can go color and then just go back to uh, RGB here like this, and you can select black. Anyway, okay. So just like experiment with the lighting. Don't be afraid to add more lights. I think um, more often than not, students. Um, don't have enough light in their renders, that uh, things are too dark. So uh, just add some light. You can do it. Uh, sorry, just making this a little bit prettier. Okay, 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 okay. Um, the next thing I'll show you, actually, hold on, I gotta collect my thoughts. So anyway, to, to kind of put a bow on cameras and lights, um, it's definitely an artistic choice. Uh, but I encourage you to kind of stretch your artistic muscles a little bit in this class. Um, you know, try, try something a little different, a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more interesting. Get a little closer to your subject. Or maybe get a little farther and zoom in. Give me some interesting angles. Maybe um, you render f from a few different places. Like maybe you render once from here. Or you... you and you kind of try something different and maybe it's like, oh, you know, maybe it's more interesting to look at the back like this, control alt zero. Ooh, maybe like, maybe this is more of an interesting render. Yeah, give me that. Um, so yeah, just, just play with it. And it's, it's, it's all fun. It's, it's all cool. Just, you know, just know that I am enjoying your work regardless. Okay, rendering. Look at your render properties. Actually, no, look at your output properties first. <laughs> um, I definitely glossed over this before. Resolution X, resolution Y. I think this is the default value. I hope it's the default value. 1920 by 1080, which is considered full HD. Um, you maybe have larger or smaller needs. Um, I think 1920 by 1080 is great for this class. If your computer is uh, struggling a little bit, you can make this smaller. Maybe you make it a square. Maybe it's 600 by 600. Um, doing that will uh, will change your, your camera view as well. So like note that um, now if I go to camera view, um, where, did it, where did my little thing go by the way? Anyway, sorry. Uh, n note that uh, if I go to camera view like this, it's changed it to a square. So that's you. You can very easily just change the, the resolution of uh, stuff here. Um, percentage. So this will, uh, if you change the percentage here, it'll keep the same aspect ratio, but um, 
make it that much smaller. So if, I, if you go 50%, it's going to be uh, 960 by uh, 540. It'll just cut them in half. Or if you do 10%, it'll be 192 by 108. Math, hashtag math. Um, okay, frame rate. We'll talk about this in when we start animating in a couple weeks. Same with frame range. Okay, output. File formats. Uh, you have several file file formats. Let's switch to this here. File formats. Uh, you've got. If you uh, twirl this open, PNG. Bitmap, Iris, uh, PNG, JPEG, Targa, a bunch of stuff. Pretty much stick with PNG or JPEG. Those are those play nice. You also have video formats. I take issue with um, the word movie here. Um, we'll also talk about these when we talk about rendering animations, but just know that that's there. So uh, file format PNG is fine. Black and white RGB or RGBA, which, uh, which includes alpha. Um, we'll talk about that next. Color depth is 8-bit, 16-bit, 8-bit is fine. Compression, you can even make that zero if you want. Um, this here is where uh, when you output things that they are saved. So you have a, a temp folder on your C drive or on your whatever drive if you're on a Mac. Um, you can actually signal a specific place that you want this to go. So like, you know, and this really only matters for video files, but just so you know that it's where know that it's there spring 2023 or whatever okay let's talk about um transparency so if, if i render this right now if i go f12 and i want to save this image save as and uh this is going to be spring 2023 this is called rear monkeys save as okay if i go and find this Uh, where's Rare Monkeys? Here it is. There it is. It looks exactly like how I rendered it. Now, let's say I want to actually not have the background in here. If, if I want this to be alpha because I want to put something on top of it, I'm using it as a YouTube thumbnail or something like that. Um, we can. But it's, it's kind of a tricky setting that uh, you may not be... Uh, you may not even think to look at. So we got to go to render properties here. Transparency is under the word film here. So render properties is the back of this DSLR camera icon all the way down to film and it's transparent. I have no idea why that's why it's here, but it is. As you can see that uh, now the background, the world uh, environment turns to this like little checker to signal that it's transparent, um, but it's not changing the like the shading of our thing. It's still using the black uh, environment. So just as a proof of concept, if I go back to the my world settings here, and I want to change this color to like green, you can see that now it's casting that green shadow on everything. Uh, we can switch it back to black. And so then if I go F12 again. Now I have the same image, but with this transparent background, I can go image, save. This is rear monkeys. Rear monkeys alpha. Save image. And then you can open it up again. Rear monkeys alpha. There it is. With the transparent background. Okay. That's uh, alpha or transparency. I am going to turn it back on just for fun. Mm, I've already forgotten where it is. Upper properties, film, transparent, off. Okay. Stay here on your output properties. Okay. Um, Eevee. So again, Eevee is the default renderer. It is a simpler renderer. It's easier on your computer. It's faster. It's not quite as photo accurate as the other engine, which is Cycles. But I'll show you a couple of cool tricks. Um, so uh, I'm going to switch this back to like my front view here. Uh, control Alt Zero. Whoops, too close. Let me go back like this. I want to include. No, no, no. I do want to get close like that. 
zero, but I just want to change my camera to be uh, a little wider. So rather than 100, let's make it 55. Okay. Ambient occlusion. This first box here. So what is ambient occlusion? Uh, well, the tooltip gave it away. Enable ambient occlusion to simulate medium scale indirect shadowing. Ambient occlusion means that um, when things are close together, like when, like, think about your hand. Hold it. Look at your hand. Look at the space between your fingers. The space between your fingers is like a little bit darker than the space on top of your fingers because the light kind of has trouble bouncing down between your fingers like that. So um, same thing in Blender. Like ambient occlusion is like where where things are closer together, there's going to be less ambient light bouncing in there. So it's occluding the ambient light, ambient occlusion. So if you turn this on, it's just going to give you a little bit more realistic shadows. I was hoping I might be able to see it here in the eyes, uh, but it actually doesn't look like it's making that. Oops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing here. It doesn't look like it's making that much of a difference anyway. This is a teeny tiny thing. Um, but again, this is, it's sort of like being faked a little bit. The other thing to look at is uh, is bloom, and it, bloom is actually really easy to see here in with a black background like this. So if you turn on bloom, um, you can s it's basically sort of like a glow. And why don't I make this like a little bit more metallic? Oh, let's add a material on here. Let's make this like a little bit more metallic. There we go. Now you can see it. Hopefully you can see it uh, right here on the top. Bloom off, bloom on, bloom off, bloom on. So bloom is just sort of like shininess, glowiness. So this is this is kind of a cool effect um, that you can do quickly in Eevee. All of these things can be done in cycles as well. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's like photorealistic stuff. You know, some of these other things, volumetrics, blah, 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 blah. Not as exciting, but the uh, ambient occlusion and um, bloom are kind of some some quick things you can turn on in Eevee. Sampling, before we move on to cycles. Um, the sampling is like the number of times it just cal tries to calculate each pixel. So if you turn down the sampling, it's going to be less, take less time and be faster, less of a crisp render. More samples is a uh, longer time. And I, I just looked at the clock and I'm already over an hour. Gosh. Okay. I, I, I'm going to try not to rush, but I'm also going to try not to s spend in more than... Just a couple more minutes on this. Okay, switching the render engine from Eevee. Select the drop down to Cycles. Cycles is ray traced. You can change your device from CPU to GPU compute if you have a graphical processing unit in your computer. Um, to check, you can go to Edit, the Edit menu, Preferences, go to your system, and you can check through, look through these different tabs here for Cycles render devices. Uh, maybe you've got a NVIDIA graphics card or an AMD. Both are supported in Blender. And you can check which ones you want enabled. And then here under Cycles, you can do choose GPU Compute. Um, I already covered most of this, but I, ju I just want to talk through like what you're seeing. So when, when you move around, uh, if you're in Render Preview, so this is, this is a key time when you'd want to be in Material Preview versus Render Preview. Um, material preview is just going to show the materials. Render is also going to render preview is going to factor in the lights. If you're using cycles, and you're moving around in the scene here, um, you see this noise. This is called noise, and uh, it is a totally acceptable thing to see. Once you kind of come to a resting position, the noise will slowly start to, to go away. And this is actually kind of a newer feature in Blender that it'll kind of gradually render as you sit in one spot. And uh, so some amount of noise is, is totally acceptable. Um, looking at the sampling here, noise threshold. So there's, there's two sections here under sampling. There's viewport and there's render. Um, in viewport, of the max number of samples that it's going to do is 1,024 samples. So it'll it'll kind of gradually get clearer. The picture will get clearer and clearer until it's done 1,024 samples. You can turn this number down to, you know, you can even make it 24, something like this. So like if I move like this, it'll go to 24 samples and it's going to sit right there. 
denoise is off in the viewport because you like you can get rid of the noise um but it it honestly like looks a little bit uglier <laughs> and you probably need more samples than 24 1024 um but you can get the gist of what it's going to look like with noise and it's it's just going to be faster if you allow noise in so like noise happens uh because it's it's not perfect it'll it's never ever um 100 percent photorealistic no matter how hard the computer tries it's just not going to be real life but it can get extremely close and then so noise is just like whatever's left over after it gets like super duper close but then there's there's kind of the computer can kind of fake it uh, but just sort of like whew, kind of smoothing out the noise, just kind of averaging things out based on the pixels that are around it. Um, so that's why in when you're rendering under render here, you do want to have denoise on. And you also want to have like some more samples um, so that it takes its time, does it right, and then just whatever noise is left, it just whoosh, takes it out of there. So noise is just like a natural artifact of uh, the computer not being 100% photorealistic. But the more you let it render, the more samples you do, the closer and closer and closer and closer and closer it gets, infinitely close, and then you can just denoise the last little bit. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I really need to say about it here, but um, either, in this class, either um, Cycles or EV is totally acceptable. The one, the one big difference... Um, that I talked about last time that I'll highlight again is the use of an emission material. Um, so in cycles, uh, let's see. If I, I'm going to add a icosphere here like this. And uh, I'm going to add a material onto it. New material. And I'm going to change the surface from principal BSDF to emission. And I'm going to change the color to bl dark blue like this, up to strength. So um, in cycles, emission materials, oh, I can brighten this up a little bit, act as lights. They cast lights onto the scene around. It emits. It's emitting light. It's an emission material. In EV, so like if you had a light bulb on a desk and you wanted it to be part of your thing, you'd put an emission material on it and let it cast light onto your scene. Um, you would need to use cycles for that. Because look, if I switch to EV, it's glowing because I actually have bloom on like this. <laughs> and maybe it looks cool like this, but it's not actually casting any uh, purple light onto the scene. And you may say, uh, Nolan, how do I how do I get this to glow too? That's that's a very advanced question, and I know how, <laughs> but that might be. I don't even, I don't know if we'll get to that this semester. Ah, no, we should we should. I'll I'll get to it. Volumetric lighting. I did tell you I was going to do that, um, but I'm, now I'm already woefully over time. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll put it in the bonus one. Okay, I'm. I need I need to be quiet. Um, final thoughts continue to work on your spooky tree there is a bonus lecture that I will record tomorrow uh, so it'll probably be a day later than this one um, that we'll, t we'll talk about particles particles and um, maybe I'll also talk about volumetric lighting uh, but may I think maybe I want volumetric lighting to be like a real um, earnest lecture, not kind of a bonus extra one. Anyway, so look for those. Uh, thanks for sticking around for one hour and nine minutes. Uh, please finish up your spooky trees. Email if you have questions. We'll look at them together next week when we Zoom. Adios.